Welcome to the Handed Down Kitchen, where we bring recipes out of the past and back into the kitchen. Today's recipe is from the 1920s and it's for an iced cherry sponge cake. This cake got top marks from our families and would make a great addition to any coffee morning, get together or even as a birthday cake. We found this recipe in our copy of the third edition of the Best Way Cookery Gift Book, which was published in 1928, and unlike most books of its age, this one has plenty of pictures in it, which is always helpful. Our recipe is in the Large Cakes chapter of the book, and the cake is big enough to provide six to eight servings, probably more like six if you like a decent wedge, using an eight inch round cake tin. So to make this cake, you will need the following ingredients. 170 grams of butter, 170 grams of caster sugar, three eggs, 226 grams of plain flour, half a teaspoonful of baking powder, about four tablespoonfuls of milk, 113 grams of halved glacé cherries, and 56 grams of candied citrus peel, a drop of red food colouring, four tablespoonfuls of water, and 226 grams of icing sugar. Start by sifting your flour into a bowl. Then add in the baking powder and mix the two together completely to combine. In another bowl, cream the butter by itself first and then cream in the sugar until they're both fully combined. Next, add in the eggs one at a time. Beat each one into the cake mixture after adding until the mixture is light and creamy. Once you've mixed in all of your eggs, add in the flour and the baking powder.
If you think the consistency is a little heavy at this stage, add in a bit of milk. We added in about four tablespoonfuls, but try not to overdo it as your sponge needs to be quite firm to prevent the cherries and fruit from dropping. Set one of your glacé cherry halves to one side, and finally add in the cherries and the peel. As with a lot of the older recipes we see, this one forgets to tell you when to add these ingredients in, but this is the usual point. Next, line an 8 inch round cake tin with baking parchment. Coat your tin with a little butter to keep the paper in place and then slot the paper in, patching up any gaps where necessary. Then pour your cake mixture into the tin. Smooth over the top a little and then bake in a moderate oven at 180 degrees Celsius, which is 356 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 4 for about one hour. Once your cake has cooked through, remove it from the oven and then from the tin and leave to cool on a wire rack. When our cake was cool enough to handle, we leveled the top to match the picture in the recipe. And if you were ever concerned about how brown the cake is looking on the outside, when you get to this step you'll see it's still lovely and light on the inside. As your cake cools down, make the glacé icing to coat and decorate it with. Start by rubbing your icing sugar through a sieve into a saucepan. And then add to this two tablespoonfuls of tepid water to start with. Then mix these together as well as you can. This is how much water the recipe says to use, but as you can see here, it is nowhere near enough to get a coating consistency. So once you've mixed this in, add more water, one tablespoonful at a time. Two tablespoonfuls did the trick for us. And then, once this is combined, stir over a very low heat for about 12 seconds. You'll know that the icing is ready when it coats the back of your spoon like this. Next, turn a bowl upside down onto a larger plate and place your cake on top of the bowl. This is how the recipe says to prepare your cake for icing. Then pour most of your icing over the cake, 
making sure to leave about one tablespoonful in the pan which will be used to decorate the cake with. And try and pour this on as evenly as possible. And then using a palette knife, even the icing out even further. And just try to get as even a coating as possible without stressing yourself out too much over it because the truth is things always look a bit better when they look homemade rather than immaculately professional and you're going to have a better time eating this thing than looking at it. And that brings us to the next step, the decorative icing. So colour the rest of your icing pink using a tiny drop of red food colouring and add a tiny drop more water if you think the icing will benefit from a bit more of a liquid consistency when it comes to piping it. Then the recipe instructs us to make a coronet or a cone shape out of a bit of baking paper and use this as a piping bag. It specifically says in this recipe that no fancy piping bags are required so we're sticking to the brief and decorating as instructed. Fill your piping bag with the pink icing and then pipe on the decorations to match the picture and this consists of a central straight line with a line of dots on the outer side and a waved line on the inner side of this on both sides of the cake. And finally, drop your reserved cherry in the middle of your cake and serve! And welcome back to the 1920s! This cake is gorgeous! It's packed with juicy cherries, the icing is just right, it is beautiful. There really is no need for a celebration cake to be more complicated than this. And there it is, an iced cherry cake from 1928. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please remember to leave us a like and if you're interested in seeing what's next in store, subscribe to our channel and click the bell button so you'll be notified each time we have a new recipe video available for you. You can also find full instructions on our website linked in the description box below.